Very good. I understand you have a, a, an interesting um, um, program uh, here in, uh, in Greece. Absolutely, yes. We'll be able we will to later today. see our um, um, gasification uh, um, uh, installations. Uh, well, you, you, you do come at a very interesting time, and I'm very much looking forward to our discussion. Um, yesterday, I was in uh, Western Macedonia, which used to be uh, the heartland of Greek uh, lignite production. Uh, to inaugurate uh, uh, the largest uh, PV plant in southeastern Europe, 204 uh, gigawatts. It was actually built uh, within within 20 months, and I think this is an indication of our commitment uh, to make the green transition a, a reality and to take full advantage uh, of the abundant uh, wind and and sun that we are endowed with. Uh, but again, this is a, a project that relates to, to the future. I'm more concerned with what is happening at present and uh, with uh, the Russian invasion uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we are all, and you know that much better than me, witnessing uh, unprecedented uh, volatility and increases in the prices of natural gas. Uh, and the interconnection between the price of natural gas and the price of electricity is uh, causing significant hardship for citizens you know, across Europe, but also here in Greece. We have uh, heavily subsidized uh, uh, households uh, and businesses uh, uh, using proceeds from the ETS scheme, but also uh, national funds. But it is very clear that we cannot deal with this crisis uh, on our own. Uh, and that is why I would very much urge you to examine all possible options to see how we can address this issue uh, at the European uh, level. I want to be very clear and I want to repeat to you what I, what I told my colleagues at the Council. If we do not succeed in addressing this issue, uh, the forces of populism will re-emerge in Europe. Uh, it is not sustainable to um, um, uh, impose this burden on, on our citizens, especially uh, when we're talking about you know, prices of natural gas that do not reflect the fundamentals of supply and demand. Nothing has really changed, but the price has increased fivefold, sixfold, tenfold uh, occasionally. So I think all options need to be on the table, uh, including a possible price cap on natural gas. And of course, we need to find a way to quickly break the link between um, uh, the prices of natural gas and the prices of electricity. So uh, I would just like to um, to reiterate to you what, I, uh, what we've been discussing at the level of the Council. M very much looking forward to the Commission, and, uh, 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 which has been very proactive in terms of coming up with, uh, with a very useful toolbox to, to move you know, one or two steps um, uh, uh, further uh, in terms of supporting uh, member states, because no member state uh, on its own uh, uh, is able to deal with this uh, crisis. Certainly not a country such as Greece, which is committed towards a pass of fiscal uh, sustainability because we're still suffering from the legacy uh, of 10 years of crisis. So again, uh, welcome uh, and uh, eager to discuss the present but also the future. Uh, if we want to see you know, the other side of the, uh, of the glass, Greece has a significant potential uh, to play as a renewable powerhouse, uh, as an entry point for, uh, for gas from the Eastern Mediterranean, either through pipelines, the East Med project, or uh, in the short term um, uh, through, uh, through LNG. Uh, and we're talking to all um, the parties involved. And of course, we also want to move forward with uh, strengthening our interconnections. As you know, the electricity interconnection between Greece and Egypt is a, is a project that needs, in, in my mind, also to have European support, but also through the, the, the Repower um, uh, instrument. I think there are other projects that would be of great interest uh, to Europe as a whole uh, that could be co-financed. Uh, uh, and uh, move off the ground very quickly. So again, welcome. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, and well, uh, it is a pleasure to be here, despite the challenging times for Europe uh, in general and uh, energy sector in particular. And uh, since um, Russia uh, attacked Ukraine, we have been focused how we can um, support this brave country, but also how we can. Um, will calm down the energy markets and how we can reduce our dependence on Russian imports. And, uh, and in this regard, I think that the key element is uh, European Union's uh, member states' unity. And, uh, and to, well, to support this unity, it is very important from our side to keep the constant contact with member states. So this is uh, the main reason why I'm here today and I'm very thankful that, uh, that you received me. Mm -hmm. I am awaiting uh, uh, very much the interesting program that is ahead of me, 
But of course, there are some um, challenges right now that we have to discuss. And then, if I could well sum it up, then uh, we do have this um, emergency right now how to well support our households and uh, enterprises in the context of very high energy prices. In the midterm, we have to secure our strategic sovereignty. And of course, in the long run, we have to decarbonize. All of us have committed to become climate neutral, and in this regard, Greece has been a very ambitious partner of ours. Uh, and, uh, and your national plans are very promising. Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned, you have, you have a unique position here, lots of abundant uh, renewable resources, but also uh, different uh, supply routes. So, um, you can lead by example and show also the other member states uh, that uh, reforms uh, are possible and actually they can give us, um, they can give us um, um, advantage if we, uh, if we implement them in a wise way.